Hello, everybody, and welcome to In the Dawn Wall. I'm your host, Georgette Taylor, and I cannot tell you how much I'm going to be fangirling today. So I <laughs> have an amazing <laughs> guest, Greg Ortiz. He is the owner of Greg Ortiz uh, Timeless Heart. He has been in the business for over 25 years, creating amazing licensed collectibles from one of a kind to manufacturing exclusive high-end Couture Limited Editions. I cannot say enough about the stuff that he produces. He does amazing artwork, amazing dolls. And I really just want to welcome you, Greg, to the show. Oh, uh, thank you. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Us. You know, where did your doll journey begin? Well, you know, um, when I first began, um, before I was welcomed into the doll industry, I collected. I didn't really know that I could sculpt at all. Oh, wow. I mean, I grew up, I grew up with a tablet in my hand from as early as I can remember. Um, and I would always draw and paint, but you know, that's two dimensional art. So mm -hmm. when you, when you take it to the third dimensional artwork, it's more intricate and more detailed, but I never really had um, any opportunities that would arise. And so later in my years, I had, uh, I went to toy fair in new york city mm -hmm. and met amazing artists and was just an awe and, and i just felt more than the connection of collecting because i collected artwork forever um had uh, met this wonderful artist called pat thompson from Vlasta dolls are you familiar with mm -hmm. her at all yes mm -hmm. from chicago um just one of the top artists in the country and um she kind of took me under her wing and uh, asked me if I sculpted and I said no and she gave me my first bar of clay wow. and um, said sculpt something because I actually wanted to work for her as a designer because mm -hmm. she had these really over-the-top uh, fashions and they were so high-end and couture and I just thought maybe I could just work under her and just create something um, with her designs mm -hmm. um, but she obviously saw something more and decided to you know, take the leap of faith and gave me the bar of clay. And six months later, I created this mermaid that was so big that I actually needed to get a U-Haul to take it to see, to, for her to see it. Um, and uh, I was in pins and needles, but uh, she looked at me and she said, you don't need to, you know, work for me. She says, you need to go on your own. So that kind of opened the, the doorways for me to um, debut in New York. Wow. So how, okay. So how did you get from sculpt, from you not understanding how to sculpt to sculpting something that you had to have a, a, a truck to take with you? That's incredible. I mean, how did that, how did, how did you go from that to that? Well, you know, it's interesting because I can look at things and I can kind of conceptualize in my brain. And so I have no training, no pro professional training. I'm self-taught, but, um, it just it just happened i mean i just want to say that it just uh once i was working with the clay it just i don't know we just it just felt made right. it work it just yeah right. it, it was yeah. yeah it was something that you figured it was just pretty much on, innate to you you didn't have to learn that much it kind of just showed up for you correct correct it was a uh, very familiar wow. even though it was an experience i just felt that it was something that I was supposed to be doing. I always felt the attraction towards art. I just never knew that that was something that was a possibility mm -hmm. for me. And when you say you were a collector, were you a collector of dolls or you were just a collector of artwork in general? I mean, just artwork collector of artwork. Like that. Okay. Yeah, um, artwork in general. Um, mm -hmm. Then it branched into dolls. I, I found a really keen connection of, of toys and dolls and nostalgia, um, but I, in New York City, when I was growing up, I lived two blocks away from the Ideal Toy Company. And um, there was a gentleman that would always bring the newest, innovative, new arrival toys that would come out that I guess the Ideal would produce. And he was friends with my father, so he would always bring my sister and I the toys. But this is kind of funny. Uh, they'd bring my sister the dolls and right. they'd bring me the Tonka trucks. And I'm just like, gosh, this is boring. <laughs> and I just kept looking at like, why does she get my stuff? <laughs> but um, I guess it's subliminal in a way mm -hmm. because lo and behold, here I am making dolls for a living. Right. So you didn't play, <laughs> so you didn't play with the dolls, did you at the time when she, when she had them? You just let oh, them play no, with that? No, no. Okay. Yeah. No, that, you know, back then that was, that's uh that's not a no, no, but um, yeah. It wasn't so much me wanting to play with them. I was more in, intrigued by the um, 
composition and how it was structured, how it was engineered, how they actually made it. Mm-hmm. Um, it wasn't so much that I wanted to play with it and you know dress it up or anything like that. Mm-hmm. Um, but I didn't figure that out till after I was older and on my own and you know having this opportunity and meeting a different artist was I able to hone in on on my craft. Mm-hmm. Okay. So would you say that's it? so? Did you find that that was where your inspiration for for creating the dolls came from when you were smaller and you saw your sister playing with these dolls, or where did your inspiration for creating dolls come from? Um, just for always, when I would look at art, I always tried to, I appreciate the art, but then it was just another level of how was it created? How was it constructed? How, how did it get from, you know, its conception Mm -hmm. to to commercial? That Mm -hmm. always intrigued me, how things were manufactured, how things were created and, and then be able to keep the consistency and the quality Mm -hmm. of something that one person could create and then have it produced so and it was a lot of you know hitting my head and learning (laughs) as i went but you know persistence really does pay off i guess that's true (laughs) that is true so how many um mediums did you start to work in did you just stay with clay or how did what type of mediums you started to work with and then why why was the why did you find those transitions to be uh something that you wanted to explore well, um, different mediums have different types of consistencies for one. And even though, um, let's say oil-based clays um, for mold making is much easier, but the temperature of your hands of each person is completely different. So um, the warmth and, and how long it takes you to sculpt something matters to what type of clay you kind of want to use. Um, I found myself personally, using paper clay because it was more forgiving and I could layer, I could sand, sand things down um, and truly get the scale and proportions that I would want. Um, and that's kind of like my preference is mm-hmm. an air dry paper, uh, clay versus okay. an oil-based clay. Okay. Uh, but I can sculpt in any of the mediums. Okay. It's just all my right. personal preference. That's your personal preference. Okay. So you sculpt yeah. it in all different mediums, but, but the the paper clay is something that you, you yeah to, to air drying because it's like uh, some some of the some of the clays you have to bake mm-hmm. um and i'm impatient like i just <laughs> want i want the finished product so uh with paper clay it's air drying it's faster um and then you have a lot of it's a lot of give with that medium um and you're able to still even though as it's drying you're still able to apply and reapply or take away and and okay to that matter Okay, and so that's what you mean by give. It allows you to manipulate it a little bit more than 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 something else. Correct. I mean, oil-based clays. Sometimes some of the clays, if they're oil-based, you um, you can't reapply. Um, it's a one-shot thing. And sometimes, you know, I'm I'm kind of a perfectionist, so I kind of want to make sure that the proportions are correct. So and, I don't want to have to start all over again. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, I hate to, I would hate to admit that to anybody else, but to you, I will. <laughs> well, I guess now to the world, right? <laughs> now to the world, now to the world. <laughs> so, so you found, you found, you found doing dolls to be satisfying. Um, that's something that you, you, cause you were a dancer. Yes. You were an actor, yes. Yes. And you were a model. <laughs> now you're a doll maker. So that transition from that, even though somebody showed you how to sculpt, how, how did that transition become from dancer to actor to model to, to, to doll um, maker? Well, the art has always been since I was a kid. The dancing came as a necessity, <laughs> I guess, because I had to live and I had to figure out what I was going to do with my life. So I decided to pursue the performing arts. It's something that I still... Um, apply in my craft because of the in the arts of performing arts is the theater or there's mm-hmm. colors costumes mm-hmm. and i've always used all of that and the experience that i would gain from everything i've learned and try to apply it um and freeze it in time i, I guess if you will um into my art so um if you look at my past art up to date uh you'll always see a flare of theatrics um, and, um, or of glam, um, mm-hmm. I, I, 
and so I always try to always stay true to where I came from and where I am now. Right. And that's through my work. How did you go from um, creating dolls to licensing dolls? What was your first doll that you licensed? Uh, Disney. It was a Mickey Mouse uh, couture, um, Mickey Mouse classic. It was uh, kind of like the traditional red shorts, but the twist that I did was uh, more of a high-end version of it, mm -hmm. uh, where I would use Worski crystals and use high-end textiles to kind of bring it to a higher level. Obviously, it's an iconic caricature, right. and you go through that processing of licensing with product development, but um, it was just just bringing us something different and unique. Um, it's mm -hmm. kind of like always what I want to bring to the table when I do any type of licensing. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, but you didn't start out licensing your stuff. You started out, did you start out selling your stuff direct? I, your, your I actually, direct? no. Mm -hmm. When I first began, I was kind of like in the 90s. It was kind of learning the, the business end of it. Mm -hmm. um, and and uh, that took a little bit of time. So I, I, I uh, branched out into galleries and little shops. Um, and... Um, from there, I wanted to just be able to understand that aspect of the business. Mm -hmm. And slowly throughout the years, I just kind of educated myself on the whole process. And now I sell direct. Um, and okay. that's when the licensing and partnerships came in. Okay. Okay. Now, with those, with those uh, licensing partners that you found, did they approach you or did you approach them? Did they say, hey, I see this and I like it. Is that something you want to do? Mm -hmm. Uh, both with oh. Disney, I approach yeah with Disney, I approach them because Disney, I grew up. I mean, I I believe everybody grew up with Disney. Who hasn't, right? But um, I've always dreamt of just being part of Disney history in some way. I wasn't sure how. That's where the performing um, oh, for the okay. theme parks and whatnot started, but it wasn't enough for me. It was like I <laughs> I felt like there was this emptiness, and I and so once I figured out that. The sculpting career was something that I really wanted to pursue. I wanted to embrace both and bridge those two things. So I approached um, the theme parks to be able to take that. Um, luckily, me, I was able to um, get through and it was a success. So from there on, mm -hmm. then I was able to have other licensing companies approach me, okay. which, was, which was very flattering and honoring. Yeah, that, that's must have been really um, exciting for you. I mean, you're approaching them, I understand. But then when people start saying, hey, I want that, that's something totally yeah. different, you know, because now you don't have to be the one knocking on the door. So Yeah, and you feel you feel more validated, I guess, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. in a way. Uh, and, and being that, uh, you know, it's I'm still an artist that's producing my own work and it's not this big corporation, big industry still that i'm trying to aspire for right that it was just wonderful to to have that opportunity that's great and you said you yeah. you said you worked at disney it's funny we had another guest um, joe mcphail do you know him he yes he's a great guy he, oh my gosh he is the renaissance. talented artist as well oh my god it's the renaissance <laughs> he does everything i i was, I was he like, does everything he literally does everything i mean mm -hmm. it's, it's amazing so it's just so funny that um, when we when we talk to some of the guests, how their um, professions intertwine sometimes, you know, with the things that they do. Um, Absolutely. We had, I think we had two two guests we had that were um, working in um, on Broadway or one dan dance. You know, it was just like, oh, okay. So it's interesting how you come from that performing arts and then branch out and sure. creating dolls or that's something that. I, and I guess it's probably because it gives you a different uh, way of. Uh, sharing expressing that you yep. love and expressions you know so it's not really far different from anything it, obviously it's the arts performing mm -hmm. arts it's the art and you you're able to intertwine those things I mean it's so uh, I feel the same way um, when I was performing as I am creating a collection for a show uh, you know you debut your work you're looking forward to having people view it and approve of it um, and most importantly that they enjoy what they're seeing mm -hmm. yeah. um, which is yeah. the best gratification i think as an artist is to create something from scratch out of your own designs and mm -hmm. be able to still communicate 
an emotion or an expression or have them relate and kind of go, I get it. Right. You know, that to me is just an amazing feeling. That's something you just can't replicate. Yeah, yeah that's true. I mean, you, you really can't. You, you, you can't replicate that because it is something that is just part of you. So when you get to feel the, the things that are part of you come to life, you know, it's yes. nothing, it's nothing else beyond that, really. It really isn't, you know. Now, mind you, I'm glad they can't talk, the creations I make, because I'd be in therapy. <laughs> it, would not, it would not be a good story. <laughs> yeah. But the good thing about art is that you don't, they don't eat. You don't have to, like, take them on vacations. They're there to make you happy. So. Right. That's true. That is true. <laughs> but in your case, thousands of thousands and thousands of other people are happy, you know, by the way. Oh, thank you. You know, just amazing Thank you. work. So when you create your dolls, uh, how much of the, the work do, do you do? I mean, as far as sculpting, and do you then create the costumes and the, uh, and all the, the makeup, everything that goes with that doll? You do all of that yourself? Yes. So wow. early on, I would only sculpt out of how I was feeling. Um, and that was a big component as to how I would portray my emotions through the dolls. Um, now, in, now that I've had more experience, I will try to begin with a, a concept. And most of the time, I would sketch something. And from there, I don't limit myself from the sketch, but it just kind of gives me a starting point as to how to transition. And then as I sculpt, that will dictate what really is the final um, concept. Um, I don't really try to restrict myself. Let's say I'm trying to create a clown and I just wanted to have, you know, a sad face. I don't try to make it the traditional sad face. What can I do that would um, make it not only my own, but um, to where it hasn't been seen before? I like to be as, as unique as possible. Mm -hmm. So um, I do a lot of research with books. I go on the internet and try to find um, whether it's content. Sometimes I actually um, get a lot of inspirations by types of antique textiles I'll encounter. Oh, really? Uh, That's interesting. Yeah. Um, okay. A lot of the older textiles, obviously, there's something, there's an energy about old fabrics that the new ones just don't have. Um, and for me, I use that to kind of take me and transport me into a world that obviously I create, but it helps me with um, getting something done that's different. Wow, and I was gonna ask you that, where your inspirations from some of your dolls come from, but I think you kind of answered that. They come from every place, so they, you know, they show yeah, up. See? And you just, yeah, what's the what's the doll that you, felt that you that you had to create first like the first doll that you really made after you learned all your skills that you needed to do what was the first doll that you just said I've got to create this because I know how to do this so I would say it would be the very first doll I did when I decided to produce on my own and manufacture on my own my first doll was called Michelle uh seated the doll was about 24 inches tall um, the length of the doll is actually 28 inches, wow. but um, I wanted to do a couple things. I wanted to make sure that the garment was as lavish as possible and a full body sculpt doll instead of, because, you know, a lot of the dolls, they have the, the breastplate mm -hmm. and the extremities, but everything else is cloth. So for me, I would look at the garments and I would go, it seemed a little bit wonky when, you know, obviously they start to slide because it's cloth bodies um, and didn't really have that beautiful structure if you're going with fashion, you know, with the fitted cinch waist. So I had to do the sculpted body. And then uh, another thing that I wanted, a component that I wanted to add was the joints. They needed to be movable, not just, you know, from the shoulders and the legs, but the wrist and the articulation needed to be so where, because hand movement to me is a big issue um, when it comes to trying to express movement. So when you see dolls that are really stiff or they're just kind of like need that one little tweak, <laughs> by giving a jointed, um, adding more uh, extremities with articulation, 
just helps that. So that was the first one. And I think I put the addition was 200. Oh, wow. Um, okay. All right. Yeah, that was a leap of faith because I, <laughs> I didn't know. I don't know if I was going to have to have breakfast with them every morning, but <laughs> 200, <laughs> luckily I did guests, right? <laughs> yeah, every morning I have to feed them bacon, but, <laughs> um, but you know what, what um, kind of was something that I decided to do into production, I had the opportunity to produce uh, my creations for Home Shopping Network. Mm. Nice. And upon seeing that, you know, there was a market and a desire for the type of creations that I was making, that's what gave me the incentive and kind of the belief to myself that, you know, there's something that I'm doing that, you know, people can relate to. So gave me the confidence, I guess, that I needed. Yeah, 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 definitely. I'm sure, I'm sure that definitely helped, you know, um, like you said, boost your confidence and know that you can do that. Because I mean, if you're on Home Shopping Network, then you know people obviously home shopping network wants it so they and they know their audience yes. yeah i mean this this industry is so competitive and there's so many amazing artists you you really do have to focus at least i've learned you have to focus and hone in on what makes you different mm -hmm. and what what is um what's creating your own style and holding on to that and then mm -hmm. from there branching out mm -hmm. um and so there was a lot of learning curves that I went through throughout the years, but um, you just don't give up, you know, you just kind of have to believe and say, you know, we'll just make it better. There's mm -hmm. days that I would just kind of like, okay, maybe I just uh, <laughs> need to look at another job, but <laughs> look at another you know, career, you know, it, something. Yes. Yeah. But you just kind of have to like, you know, shake it off and try to work on the next thing and hope that things get better. And yeah. Pay attention to your mistakes. That's yeah, well, the number that's, one thing. I, I, oh, I think that's so important. <laughs> Thank you for sharing that. It's like, pay yeah. attention to your mistakes and learn from them. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, I definitely think that's, that is so important. When you, yeah. when, you, when you talked about making something of your own and, and, and putting a stamp on that, what kind of stamp do you think that you have with your, with your dolls? What makes your dolls, do you feel what makes your dolls so unique? Because you said there's so many artists out there. You have to really define who you are what 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 do you feel defines who you are in creating a greg ortiz doll um that's a very good question i would say they would have to be right i mean just if i was to guess um emotions i have to convey through the actual sculpt and emotion and it's easy to say it i think if you're passionate about something it will automatically go through it's not just something that you can just say okay there's the emotion. Anybody could put a smile on a character or, or mm -hmm. a portrait. Um, I think there has to be um, a love for what you're doing, and that will automatically transition through, um, just like anything, like mm -hmm. anything you do in life. People can tell if you're being honest. People can tell if you're being sincere when you speak with mm -hmm. them. And so yeah. I think that is something that I just really don't even think about it, but I make sure that I asked myself, would I want that? And there's many dolls that I have not, not sold because I wasn't satisfied with it. And I think it's just wow. making sure that you believe enough in it that you're willing to uh, promote it and say, you know, that's something I approve of. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I guess yeah. that's what it would be. When I when I look at your dolls, that's exactly really what I get from them is an emotion, whether it's a, a emotion of. Uh, it's like a connection, you know, that you see the doll yes. and you're thinking, oh my gosh, you know, I, I can feel that doll or I can, I can understand what that doll is going through. It's, just, it's, mm -hmm. it's so interesting, you know, like it to, triggers, to it that. triggers, a, it triggers something maybe of a memory of mm -hmm. something you did in your childhood or something, but I always want to make sure that if it triggers something, it's going to be something <laughs> happy. <laughs> I don't want you saying that I'm the reason why you had a therapist. <laughs> no, the whole purpose of collecting is that you um, look at something and it brings you joy. Yeah, yeah. You know, and that I, is so true. Show some of your dolls. You yeah. Talk, yeah, I, talk about some of your dolls. Mm -hmm. So this was uh, the additions that I started to do with the theme parks. Um, all of what 
I grew up watching these cartoons. It's something very vintage, uh, iconic, mm-hmm. and yeah. it seems to be coming back. It's like pop culture, you know? Um, so, but I did very, very limited editions because these were very complicated to create. They're mm-hmm. full body sculpts. And when I was talking earlier about mm-hmm. the articulation of dolls, this is what I, this is kind of like what I was referencing to. Let's see if I can get this. I'm gonna bring this in. So there, there's the joints. Oh yes, mm-hmm. yeah. And it it allows you to oh, and it's kind of create. That. They're so cool. Yeah. So yeah. that's one of the the biggest key points for me is be able to kind of have it as a play toy, but still obviously as a beautiful art piece. All of them. Um, She's so cute. <laughs> yes. So here's Betty Boop, and so she has, she has the same articulations. She has over nine joints of articulation. Wow. And so it allows you, I left the wrapper on this one because it's my, my prototype. <laughs> but this one has a micro beads, has all of the mm-hmm. iconic assembly that she kind of mm-hmm. used, the iconic garter belt. Mm-hmm. Now, did you do that for a specific thing, a specific company, or just just something that you just did in honor of Betty Boop, and then, and it wasn't attached to a license or anything like that? No, this is this is licensed, and this okay. was uh, through the company that actually owns the rights to mm-hmm. Betty Boop. Okay. They did a uh, um, partnership with me. Okay. Uh, and so we were able to create, and also I wanted to make them so special, so I limited the additions to fifty. Mm-hmm. So they're very sought after right now. Nice. Um, they all came with the their lucite bases and clues and a pins, mm-hmm. certificates, mm-hmm. the boxes. I paid very good attention to those where mm-hmm. the actual tissue paper has the printing of both logos and um, the images of these iconic caricatures that we all learn to love. Yeah, that's Betty Boop is one of my favorite characters. Actually, I have like a print of her when I we went on a cruise, me and my husband, and you know, you could they have an art gallery on some of the cruises, and you could go in there and I bought this beautiful print of, of Betty Boop. Here is uh one of the pieces that I did for Disney. Mm, nice. This is the Mickey Mouse. Wow. Um, that is so cool. I love that box that he's on too. Yeah, all of this is hand painted. It's the scene from Sleeping Beauty. Um, it's kind of like the prints for the mm-hmm. Sleeping Beauty, and it's actually a music box. Oh, that's really nice. And on cue, it stops. <laughs> you lie, no. you lie. <laughs> you know that happens where you're like, oh, stop. Stop. It's, it's still playing in the background. <laughs> You're like, Dang. yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, this is one of the airing, one of the dolls that aired for the Home Shopping Network. Oh. This was a, called Precious Gem. She's about 32 inches tall. Wow. And beautiful. I believe they produced 400 of her um, mm. in the US and then they reissued her for Europe. Oh, wow. Look at that dress. That's gorgeous. Wow. And you did that dress yourself? Yes. Yes. Beautiful. So a lot, even though I I um, have seamstresses that will sew for me under my guidance, uh, a lot of the garments, the very first ones, I will do myself. Okay. Just because it's, um, when, I'm, when I'm combining textiles, a lot of times I can't figure out, mm-hmm. like, the thicknesses and, and the patterns and it's something that you just have to play with. So it's not something that I can really, you know, uh, delegate to someone else. It has to be something that I have to be hands-on with. And then once the final product is created, and if it's something I'm going to produce, then obviously we have, you know, the initial one to, to right, follow. Right. I pretty much do. Decisions, yeah, while you're in yeah. the process. So. Mm-hmm. Same thing with the wigs. Uh, there's like textures and, you know, one to hair straight, do I want curly? You know, do I want a mix? When I like to fuse things together and, and just kind of create my own type of textiles. Mm-hmm. So with that, which is great because it, it's always a play day for me. <laughs> 
you know, I get to play all day. So I, I actually love this so much that I don't, I'll go to bed really late just because it's just, I get so caught up mm -hmm. in that bubble. Right. Um, and, and then of course I sculpted in numerous or various types of sizes and heights. Um, and then there's a small one. I don't know Aww. if you could see that. Oh, oh my goodness, that's a great face. That is such and a this great one, face. these are also jointed. Okay. All right. And do you have different characters that, that size like that particular doll? Or is that doll is the only one like that? No, I've done, I, I can sculpt from two inches to, I think the tallest one was about 36 inches in mm -hmm. height. Mm -hmm. um, but I could sculpt pretty much anything. Um, I like doing the animals because it's a departure mm -hmm. of just a doll. So every once in a while, I'll throw in an animal. Um, funny story. Mm -hmm. I had a, you know, Wizard of Oz and I wanted to do a spin on it. So I created an alligator because I live in Florida. So I did an alligator dressed as Dorothy. Oh my goodness. But that wasn't good enough. So I actually <laughs> I actually created her with a basket, but the basket wasn't holding Toto. The basket just had the blanket and that was right. it. Um, and so the title of it was called Where's Toto? And the alligator you know was holding a toothpick. You know that Greg that <laughs> <laughs> I know it's it's deep. It's deep, but you know. <laughs> Needless to say, it, I had to change the title because people were upset and I changed it to, you know, uh, Day at the Picnic. But, Day, <laughs> <laughs> Day at the Picnic, okay. Trying to keep it professional, come keep on now. Professional, come on, stop it. So <laughs> I oh love it, gosh. I love the first title because that just should have been the first title. I mean, the one that you were going to do. I thought it was I thought it was a win, but you know, I did too. get the looks. I did get the looks where people were like, how can you live with yourself? Yeah, right. yeah. That's a that's a little dog. I understand. Yes, that would not be yeah. you know, too yeah. many, too many you know, know the learning curves in life. I, I, I get it. I get it. <laughs> speaking speaking of learning curves, so um what when you were when you were learning how to sculpt and you were learning how to create the fat, uh, the outfits and makeup and things, what was the most challenging learning curve that you had? On which one of those? Or were they all the same, mm -hmm. just doing things? <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say, <laughs> as far as you mean, as learning all the different yes, facets learning of all the different of facets, public, right? Exactly. I think it wasn't that aspect. I think it was more of the. Um, business end of it. Mm, that's interesting. You know, okay. it's it, for for me the sculpting and the creating was easy, um, but the business is—is is it the left side of the brain? I believe, I think so. Yeah. So that was that was. It wasn't that it was challenging in the aspect that I couldn't comprehend. It was more of right. um, the outsourcing, the mm, um, yeah. just learning the steps to get from point A to point B. And um, that that created a challenge early on, but um, I'm a quick study, so I was able to kind of just really. And you know what helped me too was um, being surrounding myself with people that believed in me, mm, um, that's so important. and they obviously had the experience mm -hmm. that would take me under their wing and kind of guide me. And I didn't take anything for granted. I still don't. You know, because even bad experiences to me, it's something you have to pay attention to because that's your learning mm -hmm. is not that it went wrong. How did it go wrong? And then how can you grow from that mm -hmm. um, and apply it to your next venture? But um, I, I won't say that this business is easy because, you know, taking a brush and painting and you know it's just you have to for me I had to decide is it a hobby is it a business um and how can I still keep that passion mm -hmm. while doing that because sometimes you can get jaded to where you just find it that it's too much to handle because it's there's a lot of hats you have to wear um but if you do love something as much as I love creating and wanting to share 
my craft and my passion with others, then, you know, it's, it's just like anything. You'll endure whatever it takes um, to get where you need to be. That is so true, Greg. That is that is that is all the truth. Yeah. I mean, it really and it is. applies with anything in yeah. life. I mean, it's not just you know whether you're in the art world or you're just in a regular nine to five job. Um, you gotta get up in the morning and you want to you know know that what you're going to go do is gonna bring some type of uh, joy and accomplishment to your life. I mean, that's really and fun. smile and smile and be happy while you're doing it. <laughs> you, do you know it's like you're still gonna have to do it so you might as well enjoy it you might as well you might if you're gonna be there if you're gonna be there you might as well you might as well enjoy it and uh or find or find the things that you can enjoy about it because absolutely not, not everything that you're gonna do you are gonna enjoy but you know there are some things that you know that once you get involved in you like this aspect or you like that aspect of it and then use that you know what I mean? To translate through all yes. the other things, yes. you know, uh, because that is, yeah. all of them are important. All, all of the parts are important. And there's only eight hours in a day. So, I mean, you, you really have to hone in on what you're really good at and then find the people that one, believe in you and that will work with you to take on the things that, not that they're less important, but that, you know, you're able to delegate so that you can have a cohesive outcome right. yeah 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 that's true and it's funny you were when i asked you about what what you thought what was more challenging or the, the le what learning curve was the hardest that you said the business part of it because uh, i guess as a creator or creative you know even though it's something you, you had to learn how to do makeup or something like that that was still in your wheelhouse in a way but learning the business probably was not in your wheelhouse and and i think in order to turn a hobby into something else, you have to, you know, be immersed in the business part because that is absolutely about making money. Now, we generally always ask this question from some, um, a lot of the artists that we talk to. <laughs> we would like to know, uh, uh, do they make a living doing what they do? And so I'm like, <laughs> I mean, I do now. I don't really want to ask you, but I don't want to ask you that question now, but I am going to still ask you the question. So do you make a living doing what you do? Yes, so I'm full-time professional sculptor and I'm, you know, still am as passionate as I was from the very first day I started, um, just more knowledgeable. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and uh, just, and another thing that I find that works for me is that, or that I don't really want to be, fall into that mold is to <laughs> no pun intended yeah. no pun intended right <laughs> i just got that um <laughs> is is to not be so complacent with what you do that you don't allow yourself to grow um mm -hmm. as not only in business but as an artist to where you get mm -hmm. comfortable with a certain thing that probably may sell so well and then you just get to where you're like i don't really want to take that that risk because essentially you're taking a risk every time you do something new and mm -hmm. hope that you know it has the same turnout um but it's good to kind of keep it um new and fresh mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. um, always bring something new to the table even if it's something uh simple um but i try to do that with my work because then yes. it it motivates me to to always try to see how i can reinvent the wheel I was gonna. Yeah. I was just. I was gonna say that. I was gonna say you're very good at that. You're very good at um, showcasing a lot of different uh, different aspects of your dolls, or, you know, and, mm -hmm. and of the work that you create. So um, I think you're really, you're really good at that. <laughs> thank you, thank you. you. Really and I, I mean, I I'm the first one to say that I get bored <laughs> if I have to do um, something more than five times. I'm just like, oh dear God. But you know. Um, it's it's fun i mean it's just you get to play but you get to see how well you can take it up a notch and mm -hmm. to me it's a challenge but but i love challenges yeah 
you know, he, well, I mean, you can look at your dolls and see that, that you love challenges. <laughs> some, of, some of the work that you create is just so amazing. And I know that it's not an easy task. You know, I know that you're trying to figure out how to create that, how to create that outfit and all those are challenges. And so I, I you definitely take on those challenges to create the uh, amazing and, you know, masterpieces that you create. So, yeah. That's oh, great. thank you. Thank you. So, and I wanted to say to all the artists that are aspiring and wanting to take their work to the next level, you get 20 million people that can tell you you can't do it, but all you need is the person that you're looking in the mirror and you need to believe that you have that talent, you know, because when I first started, believe it or not, my art teacher, I flunked an art class <laughs> because I, uh, was kind of torn between art and theater. Mm -hmm. And so I was giving too much attention to, to the theater class. So she flunked me. I was like, I can't believe it. I really thought, yeah. Um, and so I would say, you know, those naysayers, just mm -hmm. believe in yourself and yeah. you know, that's that half the battle. Right. Because if you didn't believe in yourself, honestly, and if you didn't surround yourself with people who helped you along that way, you, you know, you could have just never did art. Because there's yes. some people, you know, when you get you get flunked out or some people say, well, I can't see you doing this, this, this thing that you're bringing to me saying that you want to do. I mean, you would never be able to do that. Some people take that to heart and they won't ever move forward, you know, but yeah, again, and, you, and, it depends on how, you know, the people that you have surrounding you. Sometimes it's not as absolutely. easy for people to, to, um, to really believe in themselves, you know. So. And, and you always hear that, uh, that stigma of, uh, you know, artists. There really isn't a livelihood for artists. Yes, we hear that all the time. Yeah, and and um, I actually shied away from art because I just thought, you know, growing up on my mom's side of the family, there's so many amazing artists on my mom's side of the family, mm -hmm. but no one really pursued it. No one really thought that there was something that you could actually make a living um, to support yourself. So I actually would shy away from it, but it would come around every time I'd have opportunities to do something in art. And I kept saying, you know what, there's a reason why things come back in a circle. And I said, okay, maybe this is, this is something I need to look into. And sure enough, wow. it's something that uh, I haven't looked back on since. <laughs> well, we are, we are very happy that you have that. <laughs> oh, thank you. We're thank very you. Happy. <laughs> so I, I do want to find out though, from you, are you still just doing one of a kind or you are, are you still doing, you know, you're doing one of a kind and also multiple dial, dolls? Um, both. I'm doing okay. I'm, my, for 2022, I'm, I'm aspiring to do more production than the one of a kind. I enjoy the one of a kind, but uh, to reach the demand that mm -hmm. I've been um, requested, I'm, I'm trying to pursue more of the manufacturing. Obviously, we're in some trying times right now, so manufacturing is a little bit more challenging yeah. than normal, but yes. Um, yes. it's something that I've really, now that I've got a handle and kind of had some experiences with it, mm -hmm. I, uh, is something that I believe I will be pursuing more, but wow. I do both. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. That's great. Cause then, yeah, more people can get your dolls. That's wonderful. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. I want to do a, there's a fashion line that I'm working on right now. Um, there's a ball jointed, uh, fashion doll that I've, uh, sculpted. So now it's just, you know, tying in all of the manufacturing aspects of it before it can be presented okay. to the public. Okay. And what, what is what is it going to be made out of? It's resin. It'll be a okay. ball jointed, ball jointed resin doll, fashion doll. Oh, um, yeah. And, yeah. And scale it down. Most of my dolls are pretty sizable. Yeah. <laughs> um, so the re one of the requests I've been getting is kind of like, you know, <laughs> make it to where it can fit in a curio cabinet. <laughs> So I'm, I'm doing that. That's, mm -hmm. that's, see, that's goals, challenges. Yeah, I was going to say, so is it, is, it into, is it harder to scale down or scale up? Um, mm -hmm. As far as the work, it's the same. Oh, okay. As far as the work, whether I, whether I sculpt a large doll or a small doll, it's okay. still the same amount of work. I find it more um, challenging because it's more detailed if I'm scaling down mm -hmm. um, to where you can see the details if it's a larger doll. Right. But I'm a detailed person. So I like to make sure that even if it's a small scale, you can still feel that emotion mm -hmm. or you can still see like 
the fingernails and the cuticles right. and right. like all those little things that to me make such a difference. Wow. Uh, we're but I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, I'm sure we're all going to be looking forward to that. That, sounds, <laughs> that really sounds great. So, um, so Greg, I know you do all different types of dolls. What is the what, what what type of dolls do you really prefer doing? So when I first started in the industry, because my background with the performing arts, I started out doing showgirls, and that was kind of like the thing I did oh, in the '90s. Yeah, and. Um, they actually, each showgirl that I've done in the 90s, you're going to laugh, but it's true. Um, they depicted dancers that I actually dance with, and they had specific traits um, of, of the characters that I portrayed. I won't mention the names because we're still friends. And I want to keep yeah, it that don't, way. Shh, let's don't do that. <laughs> but I did. I wanted to... Theater is just a place where you kind of laugh and you get all the emotions. So I wanted to car capture that all in one um, sculpt. So I did these showgirls. They're very, very whimsical and, and fun. Actually, I have photos. Okay, so here are some of the showgirls that I actually sculpted. Um, the years that I was actually still performing and in between sculpt, uh, performing, I would go home and sculpt these caricatures of showgirls. Cute. Um, let me go in order and then. Oh. <laughs> so, so in the 90s, I didn't really have uh, means to outsource things. So I would literally grow my hair out so that I could use my hair as the wigs. So the showgirls that I produced, those actually have my hair. <laughs> you got to do what you got to do to get it done. I wasn't expecting that. <laughs> so when they say you get a piece of the artist, that's literal. A little piece of yeah. the artist. Wow. Okay. I didn't know you did nope. showgirls. So 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 showgirl dolls was one that you started with. Were those are the ones yeah. that you really like to do, or you just did that because yeah. those are the people you were connected with. And those are the people I was connected with, and it was kind of something that catapulted me into the doll industry mm -hmm. that was different. Mm -hmm. Um and then once I realized that that was welcomed. I realized that I could then start sharing other things that were uh, personal to me, mythology, uh, mermaids, centaurs, um, uh, what else? And then fashion, which is now kind of the realm that I'm in now, okay. where I love just doing high-end, unique, original designs that are mine that... Um, I enjoy creating. Um, so trying to take those concepts and making them into three-dimensional mm -hmm. um, with the textiles that I find is uh, something that is where I am now mm -hmm. okay. with the high-end stuff. The but high just end. a little bit of everything, whimsical uh, caricatures, animals. I love, I sculpted uh, commission work for like dogs, just anything, pigs. <laughs> You name it, I'll do it. You know, when they just send it to me, it's okay. I'll just... Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, I will tell I'm trying you, to keep this as professional as possible. You know what? It's, it's all good. <laughs> it is all good. I, I love the energy and I, I love talking to you. So um, I guess, what would you say to a novice getting started in doll making? Especially especially the luxury doll making, right? Because, I mean, you, you would really do a lot of luxury doll making. Um, yes. And so what would you say to a person who's, who's getting started and wants to and wants to go that route? Like, what would be the thing that would be most important for them to, to, to learn, I guess, or, or understand? I would say start small. Try to take on a project that you know you can finish mm -hmm. um, because that will then give you the, the experience to know what it's going to take to do a larger piece or to take something to another level. So even if you did something basic, and when I say basic is just kind of like, learn the structuring proportions, uh, learn what type of fabrics you wanna use, it, depending on the scale, make mm -hmm. sure that your proportions are correct because that's something that I've always paid attention to, that even if you're doing a caricature, you still want, Decide where you want the proportions to be and kind of hone in on that and what style it's going to be. But 
don't don't overwhelm yourself with some big huge project if this if it's your first time take some mm-hmm. take something small simple that you think you could finish in a week mm-hmm. um and see what the outcome is and then from there tweak it i have pieces still that i started with when i sculpted i always look at them because i always remind myself of things that i didn't pay attention to um mm-hmm. and then i apply it to what i do now because mm-hmm. you you can never learn enough i'm always finding myself learning just with my own work um but don't be afraid to go on the internet and google Mm -hmm. tutorials uh, learn from other people's techniques don't be afraid to ask questions all they can say is no and go to the next person go to the next person (laughs) next okay (laughs) (laughs) do like a white cat once they feed you you don't leave no Well, no, that was that was really, really, really great because I think people need to understand. I think what you said too was making sure that you can finish a project, maybe from from beginning yeah. to end. You know, because whether people, whether people, it's not great, yeah, yeah, and that, I think that's so important, especially for creatives, because we're always jumping from one thing to another. You know, always finding something else to do, and you know, just to be able to sit down and and, and see how what that process is from beginning to end to actually finishing something. I think you, you're right. I think you will learn so much, not just about the product that you, or the doll or the whatever you're working on, but so much about you. And you'll know if you'll know if that's something you want to do. Yeah. If you can finish, if you can finish a project, you'll see how long it takes to complete it, and then you'll know if that's something you want to pursue in life. And um, and you grow. You always grow from it. You always right. grow from whatever you do. But yeah, you do need to finish the project though. <laughs> That is helpful. Helpful tip number one, finish the product. <laughs> yeah. Um, also, too, depending on the medium, pick the mediums that maybe work best for you. Every artist has their own type of mm. clays that they want to, that, that work for them. Because, I mean, like I said, with the temperature of your hands or um, the air drying time, how patient you probably are or not, mm-hmm. um, select the materials that are going to work for you. And that's half the battle. Mm -hmm. Um, if you can't conceptualize mentally, draw it, you know, even if it's stick figures. So it kind of gives you a starting point, um, use photos, um, use fabrics that can inspire you, um, whether it's jewelry, it it doesn't matter. Um, going to places, uh, that Mm. you enjoy being at and kind of hone in. What is it that triggers that type of emotion you're trying to relay in your work? Mm Um, I mean, those are kind of things i do right yeah sometimes you just need that little push to to kind of get going um and just don't be afraid if you know other fellow artists ask them questions you know most most artists are willing to share and just like i had the opportunity to have an artist that saw something in me that i didn't that i didn't know i had right um was is sometimes that's all we need is someone to just kind of say you know you have something you need to try and see if mm-hmm. yeah okay. thank you so much all right is, oh my is, god is, it was a blast well you know i want you to share with everybody how they can you know connect with you see the see more of your beautiful fantastic work and uh would you like to share that your website or how people can reach out to you yes yes so if you'd love to visit with uh, with me on my website, it's Greg Ortiz, two G's at the end of Greg, um, Ortiz.com. Uh, take you straight to my website. Uh, there's an online store, you, there's a gallery, you can view pretty much a big uh, portfolio body of work of my creations. And uh, also can reach out and we can talk then. Well, thank you so much, Greg, for being on In the Dawn World with me. It has been, I'm telling you, I just was probably fangirling the whole time. So I'm just, uh, <laughs> because I just love your work. I just really love your body of work. And I appreciate it. I really do. And I also love how you talked about business and how you were able to share with other people, you know, how important it is to just love what you do and find the passion in that, you know, and to believe in yourself. I mean, that's just so important. So I want to thank you for sharing that with us and with the audience and 
Um, and I, I can't wait to see the things that you manufacture. So I, I'm already online for one of those. Oh, thank you. I'm thank you. I'm so excited to see that. So thank you. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. This is 2022. So yay. Keep fingers crossed we for will. the better. We definitely <laughs> will. So thank you again for being with, with me on In the Dawn World, Greg. I really appreciate it. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> Bye. All right. Take care. Bye.